So this morning, uh, this morning, I'm glad that everybody is here. Thank you for showing up. Uh, it is good to have you here today. I know you guys remember that a couple of weeks ago we had a, a baptism. And we had several folks that uh, wound up getting baptized. That was a, a huge blessing. It's always a, you know, a joy uh, to see that happen, to see people take that step of obedience and follow the Lord in, in believer's baptism. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it is a, it's an encouragement for all of us. Uh, today, uh, uh, we have several people that actually are taking the step. They would like to officially join the church. And I know that we don't make a real big deal about that on a regular, you know, on a regular occasion, like a lot of churches do, but uh, but it, it like baptism is a, an important part of the Christian walk, and so I wanted to take a little bit of time this morning and just talk about that. Some of these things are going to be very basic for some of you; you already know them, but some of it may be some new information. Um, <clears throat> so what we're going to do is at the end of the service, we're going to ask the folks that are uh, have a desire to uh, join the church uh, to come forward. Uh, I believe Brother Joe and Sister Shirley and Brother Kelly and um, Emma and, and uh, um, 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 what's her name? <laughs> they're, they're, they've asked to, uh, to join the church and so we're going to have them come forward and uh, uh, basically uh, just take a, time, take a time after church service to come forward, shake their hands, greet them, and welcome aboard as uh, you know, official members. So that's what the, the sequence of events is going to be today. Um, so like I said, since they're doing that, I thought it would be a, uh, a good idea to, to cover that topic, at least in general. Um, I originally started this sermon, and I had plans for the last week or so in a completely different direction for the sermon this morning. Uh, but as I sat down and began to put pen to paper, it just kind of took a it took a detour, and this is kind of where it uh, you know where it went. So uh, I, I'm assuming that was the Lord doing that, and then so since He took a turn, I figured I better take a turn. Um, but in the in the book of Acts, just to talk a little bit about uh, you know church uh, church membership that sort of thing, in the book of Acts uh, chapter one, we, we read this. So then, and this is after the, after the crucifixion, uh, then returned they unto Jerusalem uh, from the Mount of Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, uh, they went up into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas and Bartholomew and Matthew and James, the son of Alphaeus and uh, Simon Zelotes uh, and Judas, the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with women and Mary, the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. Uh, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. So again, we're starting at the very beginning, right? Um, uh, in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. So you read through that passage of scripture, and what you see is that at some level, uh, or, it, you know, somebody took the time in the very beginning of the, the church as it was getting started after the crucifixion, they took the time to sit down and, and, and number the people. They knew how many there were. They knew uh, what their names were. And so from that, you know, from that idea, we kind of, we, we gather that there's a, a group, a, a local group there, uh, the, the names and number. It says in, in Acts chapter 2, after... After Pentecost, uh, there was about 3,000 souls added to the church, and it says, <clears throat> uh, it says that they, in verse 41, then they gladly received the word, his word. Uh, they were baptized, and the same day were added unto the church about 3,000 souls. And then in verse 42, it says, and they, that is, uh, those, the, you know, the church, continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and in breaking of bread and prayers. So, when we, when we think about this, you have, a, you know, you have that, those 120 disciples that kind of started, and then, then this thing starts to grow. And what you have is you begin to have a, a group of people that want to continue in the apostles' doctrine. They want to have fellowship one with another. Uh, they want to, you know, and breaking of bread, having meals together, again, part of fellowship. Uh, obviously, there's, uh, you know, there's an aspect of communion one with another. And, and in prayer together. So you have a group of people that have a desire to be together, and they kind of know who they are. And these are why we have 
this is why we have church membership to begin with. Uh, it's just, it seems to be what they did. They were identifying themselves with that group, and they were saying, hey, you know what? I want to be a part of that group now, because I'm like-minded, and, you know, we kind of see things uh, the same, and we believe things the same, and so we, we have a desire. We, we have a desire to be a part of that group, and that's what these folks are really saying here this morning is they want to be a part of, uh, of this group for which we're greatly honored. Um, when it comes to joining the, the church, there are, you know, sim- just a couple of things that you need to understand, a lot of things that we'll, we'll talk about here this morning, uh, but you need to understand a very simple concept, and that is, when you read uh, about the church in the Bible, you're going to read about two different churches. You're going to read about a spiritual church and a local church, and we're going to take a look at, you know, what are they, uh, who are they? And, you know, what does it take to be a member? Again, some basic, uh, some basic simple things. Uh, you know, what is the difference between the spiritual local church? How do you join the spiritual church? How do you join the local church? Uh, why would you join the spiritual church? Why would you join a local church? And, and that is, you know, that is, uh, again, what we're looking at this morning. So I just basically titled this, A Spiritual Church and a local church. So let's go ahead and bow our heads in a word of prayer, and we'll uh, dive into this and see what what the Lord does. Father, thank you again for uh, these folks that have come out here this morning. It is a blessing uh, to be here on a Sunday morning just to, uh, once again, open the book and take a look at the whole reason why we've gathered together. What's it all about? Father, I know that to many of us, these things are, are very well entrenched. We have been taught them and, but they're always good to hear once again and to just um, sit back and examine what a great thing that you did when you created the church, both the spiritual church and the local church. And so, Father, just ask that you might bless this morning. Uh, help us. Uh, you know what we need. And so we put ourselves in your hands. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So, uh, again, I'm going to try to run through this very quickly, the spiritual church. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But what you know, what is the, the spiritual church? Well, you guys know or should know it is Christ's body. In Colossians, uh, in Colossians 1.24, it says this, uh, we Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. All right, so the church, the church, the spiritual church, is Christ's body, right? It is, it's not this building. It is not even, you know, uh, uh, everybody that's here today. It is, it is his, his body. It says in, uh, in 1 Corinthians 12, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Um, so again, the, the church, the spiritual church, is Christ's body. And if you're born again, if you've been saved, if you've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, then you are a part of that body. Uh, Paul is talking to saved uh, members here in this passage of Scripture, and he tells them, ye are the body of Christ. So, so again, that is a, you know, it is a spiritual body. Uh, many people get the, the idea of a spiritual body confused. Some people think it is a piece of bread. How many of you have been taught in, when you take communion that that bread is the body of Christ? Many of you have been taught that. Well, the reality is it's not. You know what it is? It's bread. It represents the body of Christ, but literally it is bread. Um, and in fact, in, in 1 Corinthians 11, the Bible says this. For in, in the context of communion, it says, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, Eateth and drinketh damna- damnation to himself. Well, I don't want that talking about communion, you can do it unworthily, you can do it wrong and, and get damnation to yourself. Well, how does that happen? And the rest of the sentence says this, not discerning the Lord's body. In other words, they didn't know what the Lord's body was, but they were partaking in communion and they didn't even know what they were doing. Right? So if you think that piece of bread is God's literal flesh, you are not discerning the Lord's body because according to the Bible, the Lord's body is us who have been saved, right? So uh, it is a, a spiritual body. Um, 
So if you have a spiritual, uh, the spiritual church, we know who it is. Uh, who is it, and how do you join it? <laughs> well, uh, it is, <clears throat> it is uh, again, the spiritual body is comprised of every believer on this globe who's ever lived during the church age. Uh, it is not just us here at Berean. Uh, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, are one body in Christ. Right? And he said that to the book of Romans. We, Paul is saying, we, being many, are one body in Christ. When he's talking to the Corinthians, a different place, a different city, he said this, for we, being many, are one bread and one body. When he's talking to the uh, church at Ephesus, a different city in a different location, he says, uh, there is one body, one spirit. Okay, well, Paul is including himself with the body at, at uh, Rome, with the body at Corinth, with the body at Ephesus, with the body at Galatia. Um, Paul's including himself with all these different bodies. So either, A, there's only one body and we're all a part of it, but they're all different places. How does that work? Well, it's a spiritual body, Right? So, so we, are, we are members of, a, of the spiritual church by virtue of the fact that we've gotten saved and the Lord has adopted us into his family. Amen. He has made us one with the Lord Jesus Christ. We are a part of him and he is a part of us. He dwells inside of us, we dwell with him, right? And that makes us, that makes us one body. Well, why do you even have a spiritual church? What is it for? Um, and the, the answer to that question can be kind of boiled down in, into this. Uh, the Lord created the spiritual church for a relationship and for a rescue. And we'll take a look at this as, as, we, uh, as we go on. But in Ephesians, uh, the, the Bible likens the relationship between the God and his church to the relationship between a husband and a wife. We all know that. God, ladies and gentlemen, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? Why? Well, because he wanted to have a relationship with you and he wanted to rescue you from a devil's hell, right? That's what salvation is all about. Salvation enters us into a, a relationship. We're now adopted as sons and, you know, a byproduct of that, quite frankly, is our sins are forgiven and we don't have to endure eternity in hell to pay for our own sins, but the Lord wanted to call out a bride for himself. And so he created that body for that. Um, like I said, you know, salvation, at salvation, God <laughs> purchases you. It says that you are bought with a price in 1 Corinthians 6. Um, it, it says in, in John chapter 10, it, it talks about, neither can any man pluck them out of my hand. The Lord, the Lord had a desire to have fellowship with human beings, and he wanted it to be something special. And so what he did is he gave us this picture of, of marriage so that we could have an, a little bit of an understanding of what he was after. And we'll talk more uh, about that in a minute when we get to the, you know, when we get to the local church. But you look at that marital relationship and how closely knit that is supposed to be. Now, I understand in a fallen world, in a fallen, uh, you know, society, uh, a lot of things get in there. And sometimes your marital relationship isn't what it should be. But even you know what it should be. You know what you would like it to be. And that's a good picture of our relationship with Jesus Christ because oftentimes our marital relationship with him isn't what it should be. I know what he would like it to be. <laughs> it is a great picture. It's a great picture. Um, and, and that is, you know, and that is why the Lord created a, uh, that is why the Lord created the, the spiritual church. Um, and folks, the Lord created the spiritual church also, I, I said for, you know, for a, a relationship and to rescue you from hell. But there's also something else coming up when the Lord Jesus Christ comes and takes his bride out of here at the rapture. And we're not going to cover, that's where I was originally going today. But when the Lord comes and takes his bride out of here at the rapture, you and I are going to head up to heaven. If you're saved, we're heading up to heaven. We're out of here. We're out of this world. We're going to take off like a rocket ship and we're going to leave this old earth behind. We won't have to worry about bills or illnesses or 
any of that kind of stuff, bad, you know, bad joints, all that stuff we'll, we'll leave behind us. We'll be heading up to heaven to be with the Lord forever. Absent from the body is present with the Lord at the rapture. But when we get up there, folks, we're going to sit and face something called the judgment seat of Christ. And the judgment seat of Christ, uh, the Bible says this, and talking to Christians, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Why? That everyone may receive the things done in his body. According to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. You know what you and I have, a, have to look forward to when we, we talk about the rapture and we hope it comes soon, but what we have to look forward to after that is something called the judgment seat of Christ where, folks, a Christian is going to be sat down in front of the Lord Jesus Christ and who knows all and who's watched you from day one and who knows everything that you've ever done, everything you've ever thought, everything you've ever even pondered thinking. everything you've said, and he is going to judge you, Christians, for those things. Amen. How you live your life as a Christian, what you did as a Christian, why you did it as a Christian, uh, everything. Now, you're not going to have to worry about going to hell because your sins have already been paid for. That was salvation. But the rewards that you could gain or lose are going to be determined at the judgment seat of Christ. Paul uh, makes reference to this and he said, therefore, knowing the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. When talking about the judgment seat of Christ, he says, hey, folks, uh, Christians, I want you to, uh, I, uh, listen, uh, there's a certain terror when it comes to the judgment seat of Christ. You better be ready. And folks, we're getting closer and closer and closer to that day. And you know what? You, you and I need to be ready for the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Something that we have to think about. And, and because of that, um, because, we, because we need to be ready for the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord, you know, again, we've talked about the spiritual body, the, the, the bride of Christ, the body of Christ, the church the spiritual church, and again, you enter that when you get saved. Everybody that's ever been saved is in that, in that body. It's, it's one body comprised of everybody that's ever been saved. Well, the Lord knew also that, okay, he, he wants to establish a relationship with you, and he wants to rescue you from hell. If you got saved, you've been rescued. You're, on, you're still working on the relationship. That'll be an ongoing thing for until the day you die. But he also knew that you had this thing called the judgment seat of Christ coming up. And so what the Lord did is the Lord created something here on earth that would be a help to you. That would be an encouragement. That would be something to help you get prepared for the judgment seat of Christ. And it'll help you on this earth as well. And that is simply this. That is the other church that we're talking about this morning. The local church. So there's the spiritual church, which is invisible. You can't see it. It's comprised of everybody uh, who's ever been born again. If you're born again, you're a part of it, whether you knew it or not. And, and that, is, um, you know, that is settled in heaven. You can't get out of it. Uh, you joined it when you got saved, and there is no quitting that church. But there is a judgment seat of Christ that we, that we, as a body of Christ, have to worry about. And so the Lord gave us this thing down here on earth called the local church. Right? Well, what is the local church? Well, it, it is a, 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 a local group of believers who are a part of that spiritual church, but they live in, you know, proximity. So they gather together and they form a local church. That's what Berean is. It is a, um, you know, it is a local church. Uh, and, and we're, you know, we meet together to, to do a lot of things. We'll talk about that as we go along, but it's different from the spiritual church. The spiritual church, you join it by getting saved. The local church, which is what's happening today, you join because you decide, hey, you know what? I found this group of believers that are, you know, along the same lines as what I believe. They're, they're, you know, all of us are different, but they're like me, 
And I want to be a part of that group. I want, to, I want to join myself with that group. I want to be associated with that group. And, and I want to, you know, to worship and, and, and serve with that group, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is what joining a local church, um, that is what it does. <clears throat> you remember back in the, the, the book of Acts, we talk about who is it. Uh, back in the book of Acts, there was those 120 and then the names, uh, you know, they had the names of the, of the disciples that were there. Um, well, who is the local church? Well, the local church is that, that group of believer, believers who've decided, hey, we want to get together. I want to be a part of that. Well, how does that local group manage who is and who isn't? Well, the reality, folks, is that local group, basically, you know, for, for us, we make up our own rules. I mean, we follow the Bible, and we go to the Bible, and, and you know, we've, we make up our rules based upon the Bible, but the reality is, you go to any local church around here, and they have their own set of rules as to who can join and who can't join. And they have their own set of requirements as to what it requires to, to join that local church. See, spiritual church, they have no control over. <laughs> but the local church, the local church, we, you know, we have our, our own set of guidelines that we go by, and we make them scripturally. And, and for us, the person needs to be born again. You need to be saved. And, and you, know, you, know, you need to be baptized. Uh, and just have a desire to join with us. And, and we... You know, again, we're not making it any more complicated than, than what the scriptures teach. We're just saying, you know, hey, if, you're, if you want to be a part of us, we want somebody that is, they've been saved. How are you going to have a church member that is lost? I mean, it doesn't make any sense. So for the local, although in a lot of other churches, you have tons of church members who are lost. It, it happens, right? Um, but, but. But how you join the church is you make the choice yourself. Hey, I want to join this church, right? And then generally we have a little discussion and I just, I find out, hey, have you been saved? Hey, have you been baptized? And okay, um, do you believe like we do? I, know, I typically tell people when they come to me and ask me to join the church, and Shirley can attest to this. <laughs> they got here, I think the first Sunday they were here, they said, can we join the church? I'm going... I would love that, but I really want you to know what you're getting into first, <laughs> right? I mean, I, hey, this is great, but I really, I would feel bad if I, if I let you come into something that, that you weren't aware of what you were getting into. I don't want two or three months to pass, and then you go, I didn't know I was getting into that. <laughs> that may be what some of you are saying right now. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but again, so, so I, you know, I asked them, hey, just hold off. Let's see, let's see what you're getting into. And, of course, they, they were consistent. They were persistent. And, and here they are. They're still sticking around. I guess you guys must have done something right because they're still here. So, um, uh, <clears throat> again, you know, Don and Emma the same way. Just, uh, just persistent. It came to church. I don't think you could get rid of them even if you tried. I mean, I could preach just a, you know, I could preach a really, really, really hard, mean sermon, and they'd come back. She, she'd come up to me afterwards and just ask me questions about it. Hey, Pastor, what about this? What about this? I love it. Why? Well, because she's found a place where she feels at home and just wants to be a part. That's what the local church is. Um, so, <clears throat> so you have the local church that you, adjoin, that you join by your choice. You make the choice. And, and we as a church either agree or dare disagree. If somebody comes in and they make the choice to join Berean, and I ask, have you been born again? And they say, no, what is that? Mm, I'm going to say, um, hold on, let's get first things first. Right? So you make the choice, and then by agreement, um, you know, you're accepted as a, uh, as a member. Now, here's actually the main part of the sermon. I'm trying to get down to this one. Why is the local church there? I know why the spiritual church is there. Because the Lord wanted to take out a bride for himself. He wanted to build a relationship with us. And that's when, when we get saved, when we trust his son, as, as uh, the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, he puts us into the body of Christ. 
and, and, and we become the bride of Christ. We become his body. It's, it's, it's wild, but that's what the Lord did. That's what the Lord wanted to do. And also he wanted to rescue us from a sinner's hell. So we don't have to spend eternity in hell because of our sin. Adam and Eve blew it in the garden, uh, you know, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Every single one of us has sinned. Every single one of us deserved to go to hell. But at some point in time, we decided, you know what? I don't want to go. How do I get out of it? Well, I can never be good enough because I can't undo all the things I've already done. But I can sure ask for forgiveness. All right, how do I get forgiveness? Well, I get forgiveness because of the blood of Jesus Christ. He shed it on the cross. And when I go to him and say, Lord, listen, I don't have anything else, but you shed your blood for me. And you know what? I want to trust you as my Savior because, quite frankly, that's all I got. I mean, I may be a great guy. I may not be a great guy. But I, you're, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, the Bible says. And when a man trusts that, the, the Lord applies that blood to his sin account. And all of his sins, everything you've ever done in the past, quite frankly, everything you're ever going to do in the future, is covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin for you. Amen. That makes you clean. That's why the Lord can now look down and say, okay, now you can be a part of my body. And then you get to this uh, idea of a, a local church. All right? Why is it there? Well, the local church is here, folks, to do this, to strengthen your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and to strengthen one another. In a nutshell, if you, if you boil it all down, uh, those are the two, you know, those are the two uh, reasons why the local church is there. Um, to strengthen your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and to strengthen your relationship with one another. It says in uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 2, it says, Paul said this, he said, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband that I may present you a chaste virgin to Christ. You know what the Lord wanted? The Lord wanted to build that relationship with you. And he gives us the picture of a husband and wife. I look for some pictures to, you know, <laughs> to, to put up a visual aid on that. But every one of them had angels with wings or they had boyfriend Jesus. Uh, you know, <laughs> And I just couldn't bring myself to. <laughs> there. Never mind. I won't go there. You wouldn't believe what, go through some, what goes through some people's mind when they're thinking of the Lord and his bride. But uh, let's just say that that didn't belong in church. Um, but he said, I, you know, I have espoused you to, to one husband that I may present you as a chaste version to Christ. The Lord's desire is to build that relationship, right? The church is here um, to, to encourage you, to help you in your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because that's what he wants, first and foremost, right? Uh, in Ephesians 5, it says, for this cause... Shall a man uh, leave his father and his mother? He shall be joined unto his wife. They too shall be one flesh. And the Lord likens that to the church. <clears throat> right? So we know that is, the, that is the picture. Well, folks, the local church is here to strengthen your relationship with Christ. And first and foremost, it is to help you love him more. Amen. That's why you're here. I mean, it's great. We have fellowship. You know, the ladies get together and they, I don't know, they burn themselves and then cook something. I don't know what they do, right? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, they get together and they, they make cards and they sew. The men get together and we shoot guns or we, <laughs> you know, we do something, you know, constructive, manly. We get together, we, you know, we work on a project. We do different things like that. And all that stuff is great and all that stuff is necessary and all that stuff helps, helps build the second part of what we're going to talk about. But, but the primary function of the church is to cause you to love the Lord Jesus Christ even more. That's, that's why the Lord gave you this picture of a marriage when it's talking about the church, right? Because in our mind, we understand what that is supposed to be. The purpose of the marriage is for you to uh, learn to love and grow in that love with each other. 
I mean, for the, any of you that have, for those of you that have been married for, for some time, you know, you loved each other when you first got married, but there's a much deeper connection now than there was back then. You say, oh, we were young and, you know, I just felt all the butterflies and I don't have the butterflies now. But there's something now that is even stronger and more enduring than way back then. That's the idea. The love, the love grows. The love matures. The love gets better and stronger and it is, you know, it becomes impossible to break. That's what the church is for, is to bring you into that kind of a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So that no matter what happens in the outside world, your love with him will endure, just like your marriage should endure. I understand we live in a fallen world. Sometimes our marriages don't endure. That happens. It's sad. It's a bummer. It's not what it was supposed to be, but you know what? you got to pick up the pieces and carry on, so be it. Not that way with the Lord Jesus Christ. With him, that relationship will endure. It is what is, it is going to be what it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be working on it and growing it right now. Uh, the purpose of, uh, again, the purpose of your marriage is to grow in, in your love for each other. The purpose of being a parent Right? We think of, the, we think of our relationship with, with God. He's a father. We're the children. So we see that, that relationship pictured in the marriage. We see that relationship pictured in the parent-child relationship. You know what the purpose of being a parent is? To help your children grow. To love them. To help them grow. Hey, listen, the more you love your wife or husband or child, the more you want to see them happy. Right? You have a desire to see them happy. You don't want to see them sad. You don't want to see them, you know, uh, um, down. You, you, the more you love them, the more you have a desire to see that they experience happiness and joy. So it is with our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? The more you love your husband, your wife, your children, hey, listen, the more that, that you begin to be aware of providing for their needs, and their wants. You take note of those things. Why? Because you've grown to love them. They're important to you. Hey, my child needs this. I'm going to make sure that it's there. My husband or wife needs this. So I'm going to, well, you know what? This is just going to make them happy, so I'm going to give it to them anyway. What is that? That is, that is love that's growing and that relationship is building. And, and your eyes become less and less on yourself and more and more on the person that you love. And that's the way the husband and wife relationship is supposed to be. That's the way the parent-child relationship is supposed to be. All right? You provide for their needs. Uh, you, know what a, you know what a spouse needs or a child needs? Time. Attention. Food. Clothes. Shelter. Safety. Encouragement. Direction. The more you love your children, the more you'll see to it you give those things to them. The more you love your husband and wife, the more that you'll see that you provide those things to them. Don't you expect every single one of those things from God? I mean, when you look at your heavenly father, don't you expect, you know, for him to listen when you pray? Don't you expect for him to hear you? Attention? Hey, he, he's, like, he's not like, Shut up, I'm busy. <laughs> That's not what you expect from God. Don't you expect him to provide you food? Lord, where are we going to get our next meal? Clothes? Shelter? Safety? Encouragement? Direction? Those are things that we expect God to give us. Well, those are things we give our husband, wife, child. Why? Because the relationship is growing, and the more it grows, the more desire you have to, to instill those things. You don't want to be married to a husband that is, neglects those things, do you? Hey, honey, I really need this. Ah, get it yourself, woman. <laughs> Hey, hon, can you reach up there and grab me that? Oh, go get a ladder. You can get it. That's not, that's not what you expect. 
And if that's happening, maybe there's something not quite right. Well, same way with our relationship with the Lord. The church here, the local church here is to, to help us grow and love so that we don't become that kind of husband or wife or whatever, child. The purpose of the, the local church is to help us realize, hey, listen, it's not about self-love. Have you ever seen those marriages where Unfortunately, it's usually the wife that runs around all over the place trying to make sure the husband's happy because she doesn't want him to get mad. And if I just, if I just get him his coffee, then he'll be happy. If I just, if I just do this, he'll be happy. If I just do that, and, and she's doing it, everything she's doing to make him happy is because she just doesn't want him to be mad at her. Uh, hey, that's not the way relationships are supposed to work. You begin to looking, you begin looking, I don't know where I'm at in my slides. <laughs> You begin looking at him, um, you know, your husband uh, that way, and, and you begin doing things, or your child or your, or your wife that way. You begin doing things not because you love them, but because you fear them. You're afraid of making them angry. Now, I get it. In the right context, you're supposed to have the fear of the Lord. Right? But I hope you didn't just come to church today because you were afraid God was going to punish you if you missed I hope you came to church today because there was a, a, a love and a desire to grow closer to God. That's what the local church is for, is to, to help you love him even more. Listen, you're supposed to have, um, you know, you, you're supposed to have joy, right, in your, in your life. It's one, of the, it's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long, right? Long-suffering. You're supposed to have joy. How are you going to have joy if that love and that relationship is that broken? See, a lot of times, a lot of times Christians, they're so afraid that, you know, they, they think God is this big guy with a hammer just waiting to hit him over the head, and they do things because they're afraid. Well, there's no joy in that. You know, when my wife go out to dinner, I, you know why I take her out? I like it. <laughs> She's nice to me. <laughs> I try to be nice to her. It seems to have worked pretty good for the last 40 years. When I think of God, that's what I think of. The goodness of God leadeth thee to repentance. You know why I serve God? I don't... I don't <laughs> I mean, you say, are you scared of God? Well, yeah, of course, he's God. <laughs> and he can squash me. I, and I would deserve it. If he, if he chooses to squash me, I guess I'm going to be flat. But you know why I serve God? I serve God because, you know what? I want to. Because he's a great God. He's worth serving. Because I can't think of anybody else I'd rather serve like that. You know why I'm married to her? Because I can't think of anybody else I'd rather be married to. And it brings joy. There's a, there's a joy in serving God. You know, the, 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 the local church here is to help your love grow for the Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, you can make a list of a thousand different things that people should be doing. But you know what? If your love is growing for the Lord Jesus Christ, you won't have to worry about that list. Because they're going to happen. <laughs> Because you're going to be doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Why? Because you love him. And then finally, I'll, I'll have to wrap things up here. The purpose of the local church. Um, I, I, I kind of jumped over these real quick. But uh, is to love him more, to trust him more, to honor him more, to obey him more. If you love me, keep my commandments. Well, Okay, I love God. I'd like to do the things that makes God happy. Why? Because I'm afraid of him? No, because you know what? I care about what he thinks. And you get your mind at that, po at that point, when you stand at the judgment seat of Christ, you know what you're going to be judged for? Well, I did all these things because I love God. <laughs> How do you think that's going to turn out? 
as opposed to, well, I did all these things. I only did these things because I knew that if I didn't, you were going to squish me. Is that really the kind of father you think I am? <laughs> so the local church is here to strengthen your relationship with Christ. And the local church is here to strengthen your relationship with one another. The Lord knew we were going to be tough down here on this earth. He knew it's not a perfect earth. He knew we were going to be in the midst of a sinful uh, creation amongst sinful men and sinful Christians were going to be around us. And he knew that there were a lot of things that were going to go wrong. And there's going to be a lot of reasons why, you know, uh, Christians could fall. But he said, he said, all right, you know what? I'm going to give them this church not only so they can learn to love me more. I'm going to give them this church so they can learn to love each other more. And I was joking with Andre yesterday, and I, we were joking around, and I, I off the cuff made a comment about forgiveness is going to make it into the sermon today. <laughs> and I told him, no, I'm, it's not. That, I'm, I was going in a completely different direction. <laughs> well, it made it. <laughs> how, do you, how do you strengthen the relationship with one another? Well, you got it. Forgiveness. Right? Ephesians 4.32, be kind one to another. Tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. That's a high standard. But when you sit back and think about how much the Lord Jesus Christ forgave you, <coughs> you can forgive somebody else. Hey, the whole reason we're here is to build relationship with one another. Build relationship with Christ first. You say, why do we do all this other stuff? Well, you know what? It just helps that aspect of things. But we're supposed to be building a relationship with one another. And it takes, it, it takes, folks, it takes being able to forgive because I promise you, somebody is going to step on your toes. I don't know how that, I don't know how you can avoid it. How many of you have ever stepped, literally, physically, stepped on somebody's toes by accident? Show of hands. <laughs> I rest my case. Same thing happens in the spiritual realm. But we have a tendency to get really angry if somebody, you know, maybe your toe is your looks and somebody criticizes them or doesn't like the outfit you have on or you, you guys are really good about that. You don't, you don't fall to that petty stuff. Um, maybe sometimes it's your family. Maybe it's your career. Maybe it's, you know, fill in the blank. But you've got a toe. And every now and then someone's going to step on it. Be angry and sin not. <laughs> right? Let not the sun go down upon your breath. And then the next verse says, neither give place to the devil. So at the same time, we're trying to build our, 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 our love and grow our love with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're trying to build our relationship and our love with one, with one another. And in order to do that, listen, you need, you need forgiveness. I'm going to have to hurry. Uh, you need fellowship. Hey, it's kind of hard to have good fellowship if you can't forgive somebody. Sit across the room. I ain't talking to them. I'm not going to sit at their table. Right? You see kids do that all the time. Hmm. I'm mad at you. Okay, well. Build a bridge and get over it. <laughs> How's that for sensitive? Hey, it's kind of hard to build, uh, you know, to have fellowship if you don't take time to have, um, you know, if, if you don't take the time to be with somebody. How do you have fellowship if you don't ever spend any time with them? How do you have fellowship if you don't participate? And the reason we do all these things is, you know what, to encourage and to help the fellowship process. Because that's what we're here for. Again, I'm going to have to hurry. It's... it's 
The local church is here, ladies and gentlemen, not only uh, to help us in our relationship one with another, uh, we do that by forgiving one another, by having fellowship with one another. Hey, listen, by encouraging one another. I mean, the Lord tar- charged uh, Moses, he said, but charge Joshua and encourage him, strengthen him. Why? Because every one of us needs to be encouraged along the way. Every one of you is going to hit that point where something's gone wrong and you're going to be down in the dumps and, and something's going to be bothering you. And it may not have anything at all to do with anybody else in the church. But it, could, it could be extended family halfway across the nation, but still, it's a heavy burden and you're bearing it and, or, or something's wrong and, and you know, you're, you got a bad report from the doctor's office and you're, you're carrying this burden. And now all of a sudden, you know, you have to live with that. And you know what's really good when that happens? When somebody comes along and they're just a friend and they're just an encouragement to you along the way. Maybe they know what's going on. Maybe they don't. But they're just an encouragement to you. That's what the local church is for. You know, the local church is for here for us to be examples to one another. Right? Examples of peace, uh, you know, of patience, of charity, of joy. Um, You know, it says... In, in Titus, that the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. The aged women, likewise, they be in behaviors becometh holiness, not false accusers, not given to wine, uh, you know, much wine. Teachers of good things, that they may teach young women to be sober, to love their husbands. Our, you know, our job here in the church is to be an example and a help and an encouragement to one another. And finally, I'll, I'll wrap things up. Uh, our, our job is to... Ladies and gentlemen, bear one another's burdens. Like I said, every one of you is going to go through some difficult times, and there are going to be times where you are just fit to be tied at the end of your rope. And you know what you need? You need a place where you can come that is encouraging you to work on your love and grow your love with the Lord Jesus Christ primarily, and then working on your love and growing your love with each other. Those two things will get you through that difficult time. But if you don't have either one of those things, that difficult time is, seems like it never ends. Why? Because you just stay focused on that difficult time. You got to get your eyes off the difficult time and on where they should be. And that's what the local church is there to do, to encourage, to, to help with. Hey, get your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's get, you know, you say, I'm having problems with my brethren. Okay, well, then let's focus on your relationship with him. Are you having problems with him? Whose fault is it? <laughs> let's get that taken care of first then this, I promise you, this one will work out. Right? That's what the local church is all about. So, again, a spiritual church and a local church. A spiritual spiritual church, ladies and gentlemen, when you're born again, you're saved, you're put in it, you don't have any choice, membership is automatic, it's salvation, you can't get out of it. You're locked in. The Lord Jesus Christ loves you. No man can pluck, uh, you know, can pluck him out of your, uh, pluck you out of his hand. <clears throat> and um, it is all of us, not just this group here, but all the groups across the, across the globe. But man, that local church is something a little more concentrated. Amen. It serves a different purpose. Spiritual church saves you from hell. Local church doesn't save you from hell. But it sure does make life on this earth a lot easier. Because it encourages you to keep your eyes on the Savior and to to try to build that fellowship and relationship one with another. Because, folks, we go through a lot of hard times down here on this earth. And so these folks here this morning have decided they wanted to join church. And I've already talked to them. And, um, you know, all of them are saved. And we welcome them as part of Berean Bible Baptist Church. They're part of the local church. Why? Because they want those two things. Be encouraged in their relationship and their walk with the Lord and to be encouraged in their, and strength, strength in their relationship one with another. That's what it's all about. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for 
just the opportunity to be here on a Sunday morning. Now, Lord, these, uh, these folks here have decided they wanted to become a part, become members of Berean Bible Baptist Church. We certainly thank you for that. Ask that you might bless them for it. Father, help us as a church to keep the things that we need to do uh, in the right order. Help us to always be a place where you're lifted up, where we're encouraging people to uh, uh, get closer in their relationship with you, but also get closer in their relationship one with another. So give us a, a, a help in those areas. And uh, Father, pray that you would bless these folks. I ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.